Welcome to the Homegrown Hunter TV. On today's show, I'm going to show you how I enjoy smoking using hot smoke. You know, every smoker is slightly different. You got to kind of learn it. I found that using hickory, obviously, you get great flavor with hickory. But every once in a while, when the temperature gets up to where I want it to be, I'll throw on a chunk of applewood. This stuff has been dry for several years now. Mom actually got this set aside for me so I can do my smoke in the summer. Is that a goose? Yep. I just hear a goose. We're going goose hunting February 26th. FYI. Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. So what I'm going to be making right now is actually referred to as a queso dip, or is often referred to as a cowboy dip. It's great at parties, a uh, football party this weekend, so my buddy's 50th birthday party, we're going to take half of it, take it to his party, and then the other half, we're going to keep it for the football Sunday. My goal here is to smoke the meat prior to making it all together. So. I've got about two pounds of ground venison that, you know, a doe that we shot this year. We ground it all up at home here. There's absolutely no fat in it. It's very, very lean. Now I've also got some ground pork I picked up today. We're going to mix that all up. We're going to put them in semi-sized balls, and then we're going to put them on a pan with tin foil on it and put it right into the smoker. So then that way all the smoke flavor gets added to the meat. And then what I'll do later on is we'll bring it in and mix it up with all the other good stuff. But we'll get to that a little later. So right now we're just going to mix this right up. Add a couple pounds of the ground venison. And you can do this with moose or caribou or elk or whatever you've got. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of pork to it to add a bit of fattiness. There's no perfect measurement here. I'm literally just gonna kinda go half and half. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got couple of taco seasonings. Now, normally you would mix this up and fry it in a pan. I'm gonna mix this in right now so that when I put everything together, it's actually smoking with that flavor in there and it helps embed that taco seasoning right into it. And this is actually just for one pound of taco. We can add another package a little later if we de deem necessary. They're not gonna cook all the way through. It's gonna be like the cult, a quarter inch or half inch. It's gonna get most of the smoke in it. And then come back into the house. And then we'll crumble all this up and pan fry it. Like for like a normal brown browning of hamburger. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rack Stacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, 
Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer, Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Kent Cartridge Canada, Nature of Design Signs and Graphics, Woodland Mills, and these other fine sponsors. In a past episode of The Homegrown Hunter, my team and I, as well as Maverick, my nine-month-old wire-haired Griffon, went out for a training episode with some good buddies of mine at the Exeter Game Farm. We ended up shooting a bunch of pheasants. This is only a couple of them here. But we're gonna be making what's called Mexican tortilla soup. My family absolutely loves this. It's got some bite to it. Uh, brings again Mexican flavors into the family. And it's something that we've enjoyed making in the winter time because it warms you up inside. Now what we're gonna be doing is supplementing the chicken with the pheasants. What I like to do to prepare the meat is to ensure that you have oil on there. I, again, we're going back to the, the olive oil. The olive oil will stop it from sticking to the pan or the grill, and then we'll get the smoke flavor in there. And I'm gonna also add what's called, or what I call gotcha seasoning. This is my own rub. I've made it over the last couple of years. I'm slightly tweaking it and hopefully eventually have my own spices for you. But as of right now, we're gonna use that on today's show and uh, we're gonna get this onto the smoker right away. When I know that I'm gonna be doing a big smoke day like this, I wanna make sure I've got lots of meat that the grill is actually full. So I know this looks like a lot of sausage to most people, but in preparation for the upcoming turkey season, I also like to add a lot of sausages to it. And then later on in the show, I pre-package them all so that when we get back from a turkey hunt in the morning, we can slam something in our guts and get back out after the afternoon hunt. So this is more in preparation for the upcoming season. This is just a mild Italian pork sausage. Normally what I do like to do is, the wife's got this extra virgin olive oil. I will pour this onto some of the sausages and all, because I'm using a smoker, a homemade smoker, all this is gonna do is just make sure that it doesn't stick to the, the grill itself. And uh, the oils also get very hot and cook it through, maintaining the moisture that's in the sausages. So I like to add a little bit of oil to it and then we'll add this to the grill in a short time. Last and final thing that I'm gonna be adding to the smoker today is bear sausage. This actually came from KB Lodge. This is a hunter's blend type sausage. There's actually two kinds. There's also honey garlic. These came from my buddy, Adam Blur. He's the head guide at KB Lodge. If you've missed any episodes of the Homegrown Hunter TV, be sure to visit hghtv.ca or our YouTube channel. You can follow up on any hunts, especially uh, my daughter's bear hunt and I'll tell you, this one here, we had it the other day while coyote hunting. Absolutely awesome, I'm glad he kept a couple around, so we're gonna smoke them too. There's some really good past episodes of Adam Blur and I hunting together. We did a Lake Sinclair, limited out very early, so we went out in the afternoon with a couple of girls, you should check it out on our YouTube channel. Any past episodes you've missed from us, any cooking shows, pheasant shows, or if you're a duck hunter, by all means check it out. Kent Direct has all the shells you're looking for. The Tacticam Reveal is the official trail camera of the Rackstacker Elite staff and the Homegrown Hunter TV because they're reliable. If you want to get into accessories, you can check out rackstacker.ca and get them right across Canada. And now, this week's Cut to the Chase segment, brought to you by Rackstacker. If you plan on doing any type of hot smoking in which I've done today on today's show, you need to ensure you've got yourself a good supply of dry wood. Now, if you follow me on social media or throughout the year, you'll see that half the time I'm in chainsaw pants because I do enjoy spending a lot of the time in the bush. And whenever I come across a hickory, which is a bitternut hickory on my farm, I keep it in small blocks. So usually 11 to 12 inches to fit the splitter. I will leave it out in those blocks for the first season and in the second season I'll split them up in smaller pieces and store them in the shed. Another thing I do is whenever I come across some apple wood, whether I'm trimming it on my own orchard, or in this case my mom actually set all this aside for me because she enjoys having the smoked meat as well, so she keeps this aside for me. Get yourself some apple wood, make sure it's well seasoned. This is about three years dry and you wanna make sure that you've got everything as dry as possible. Sometimes I'll even put this in the house a few days before 
smoking for that day. So it's important to keep your wood dry, make sure you got lots of stock, because once you start smoking like this, you're gonna love it and wanna do it more often. Somebody was telling me to put a hydraulic arm on this. Is that what it was? That's all right. They gotta eat too, eh? So, Anna, you're gonna peel all those uh, that doesn't part, eh? And some of the best times I've had over the years has been around this big smoker. Lots of friends, lots of food. As you can tell, there's lots of food on there now. We're gonna let this smoke for about an hour and a half. These will be about an hour and a half, probably an hour for the sausages, and then we'll pull everything off. Decorated it with a little mule deer. Take a lot of pride in this smoker. Instead of trying to sm smoke it like a pellet stove for six to eight hours, I smoke it for an hour and a half and then cook it normally in the house. There. So when I showed up this morning at about nine o'clock, I think it was, you had this thing just fully loaded, burning hot. Basically, have you thrown any more wood on since then? How long did it take you to actually build those coals? I started this at nine o'clock this morning. We're just after 12 o'clock now. And the reason I fired it up, like loaded it full, is I wanted a good coal bag because that's what's going to cook the meat. And that's what's going to allow this slow smoke, to, the process to, to heat the meat up. But I, what I learned was loading it full and getting this whole thing to one temperature, it doesn't tend to drop the temperature inside as much as it would if I was trying to contain like a slow 175, 185 degree temp. I'm better off getting it right full, loaded to 300 degrees, so when I throw the door open on this, I don't lose as much heat when I close it back down. Right, and that's just because the whole unit itself has retained so much heat as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Instead of trying to get it 300 degrees here, I got 300 degrees here, but in the center portion of it, when the, it's closed up after loading it or maybe checking or flipping flipping the meat over, I, I, I lose a lot of temperature. That's a huge door, right? It's heavy too, so I mean, it takes me a bit of time to get it up and do my thing and close it back down. You lose 100 degrees in temperature really quickly. So if I can raise the temperature of the steel to get it to where I want, it'll help maintain that temperature so you're not losing it too much. It's a little different than your side smokers, right? Your side smoker, you know, it's, it's bellowing the heat up and your smoke has to cross all your meat. This is the way this smoker is built. It's the way I've used it. I enjoy doing it, but it's a huge grill. So if I'm gonna smoke and get it fired up and get everything going for the whole day, I wanna do 16 meals with it. And that, or at least a big party, which I have a couple times a year. Yeah. So it's pretty cool that way. But you can see the chain that's welded on the outside. That's what I, this whole thing used to tumble. So when we first started Rack Stacker, this is referred to as a bumstead mixer. So you'd flip a switch on, this would spin for 15 to 20 minutes mixing up our food plots. And that's where we started in the garage. So the kids were just, infants and I'm in the garage mixing up food plots to sell at a trade show the next day and that was in 2005 so it's been almost 20 years since this hot rod got into my garage and I was going to scrap this until Troy Fleeler come by he owns DCW welding and fabrication and he's like man that'd be the coolest smoker so I literally gave him the the green light to do whatever he wants with it and this is what he done it's turned out pretty cool it's a sentimental piece now so works out really well Good for partying. Yeah. But now we're in February, right? So it's cooler weather, it's not as easy to maintain. So the faster you get the temperature up, the better it'll maintain it. Try and maintain 185, 200 degrees. Run that for an hour and a half and your meat's ready to go. But I'm gonna go get some applewood that I've had for three years from mom's place. And I'll put applewood in there and let it slow smoke. But like you can see it smoking now. Yeah. I can tighten that up and it'll get really smoky because it's obviously not getting enough oxygen. I prefer to keep the door open slightly just to keep that heat flowing through. 
can feel a lot of heat coming out here. Yeah. So it's, it, I mean, it's not hot to the hand. It's just, that's the perfect smoking temp right there. It smells awesome. It smells real good. Yeah. So, but no, I'll throw some apple wood in there in a little bit. We're gonna try and maintain that heart. And it's about 160 right now. I've had it in the middle of the summertime where it's like 30 degrees out in July and you put one stick in there and it jumps hey, to 300, you're three and a quarter. Off the sun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, with being eight or nine degrees today, you know, middle of February, this weather's gorgeous. Why not smoke some meat, right? We, we pre package everything too. So, obviously, we're coming into turkey season next month and a half. So, I'll take these into the cabin and I'll pre package them in like four and five, six packs at a time. So, when all of us are running around trying to film turkey hunts and you get hungry, you just it's like a smoky. Yeah. Just pull them out and enjoy your lunch right on the tailgate of a truck. It's perfect. Yeah. But I try and do as much as I can in one shot. I kind of got a quiet Friday afternoon before Super Bowl, so why not? But. Welcome back to the Homegrown Hunter. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Banks Outdoors, distributed in Canada by Rackstacker. All right, so as of yesterday, we got all of the smoking done, and at the end of the day, after removing all the sausages, we ended up putting them into a couple of Ziploc bags and putting them in the fridge to cool. We also took the pheasant, my wife and my daughter put them into a chicken broth and slow boiled them for about four or five hours. Still got lots of smoke flavor there, but we wanted to make sure that it was fall off the bone. So when they'd done that, they actually put it aside. So now we're going to make some chicken tortilla soup, but substitute the chicken for the pheasant that we had done on the hunt over at Exeter Farm. And as of right now, because we're planning ahead for the turkey season, what I'm going to be doing is pre-packaging all the sausages into four and five pieces or four sausages in each package. So, you know, everybody's life gets busy. You can be out hunting all morning and then get back and realize you didn't pull anything out for dinner. So this is a really quick fix to slice things up and throw it into a spaghetti. Or if you're out in the field and you want a snack on a smoky, you can have that as well because they're already pre-cooked. Uh, so it's got that smoke flavor to it. We're just going to pre-package them and get them into the freezer. And then a little bit later in the show, we're going to show you what we're doing with that queso dip or the cowboy dip from my buddy's 50th birthday tonight. Got a big party going on and we're going to keep half of that for tomorrow's Super Bowl party. So right now I'm going to package this up real quick and then we'll get back to the kitchen and show you the other things we got to get done. I can't say enough about these airtight bags. I got this food saver from my kids on a Father's Day gift and I use it all the time. I use it year round for shrink wrapping all my turkey in the springtime from fish to obviously sausages and smokies for snacks. I do it with all my venison after I've ground it all. It works extremely well and I love using it. It's very simple. You push down, seal it, and it's done in no time. And for the final thing, you want to make sure you put your dates on it. Smoked, I tell you, in February 24. Closed captioning brought to you by Woodland Mill, a Canadian premier forestry products company. It's time to get started on the queso dip. This is going to be absolutely fantastic when we're done with it. First things first, you want to take those smoked balls, turn it onto a medium heat and chop it into smaller sizes. This is where you can add onions, chili peppers, red and green peppers. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. The biggest key is just heating it up and while you're heating it up, cook down the vegetables that you need. Sometimes when you're smoking stuff, it can get dry, so I like to cover it up. In some cases, I'll add tomato or even a mild or medium salsa to it. Again, just adding more flavor. Now is the time for a taste test. Mm. 
Ah, uh, she needs a bit more. So we're going to add some more taco seasoning to it. Again, this is just for my own personal taste. I'm going to add some water to thicken it up. And we're going to let this sit for a couple minutes to finish off those onions. It's now time to chop up some Velveeta. This is what makes queso dip, queso dip. Velveeta cheese. It melts very, very good. Makes things all sticky and gooey. It's really good for using nacho dips and your tortilla chips in it in order to eat for a snack before a football game. Cover it up and let that cheese melt, and voila. This is what the final product is gonna look like. All you need to do is get one of your buddies in for a taste test. Dip and give her. Honest opinion. good yeah yep smoky i like it does it need more cheese everything needs more cheese <laughs> okay i'll add more cheese more cheese added and you got yourself a queso dip for your buddies during a football game or even at the hunt camp give it a try and remember it came from the homegrown hunter you're probably wondering about that tortilla soup that I was talking about earlier. Well, we've decided to wait until next week's show because that's when our Exeter Pheasant Hunt show is airing. We're going to add that tortilla soup to it and show you exactly how to get it done. I appreciate you joining us. I'm your host of the Homegrown Hunter TV. Until next time. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.